Alright guys, day 12 here at Westbury Acres. Finish up putting this 2x4 dirt on right here. Something uh, I like to add between the wainscot board and the grade board. Um, just so you have, it's nice to have an extra nailer in there for electrical outlets on the outside, water cooking. And just gives that wainscoting a little bit more uh, durability. But, um, we are gonna start putting all the window boxes in. They're all pre-made. Jake and uh, Cash made those, um, I don't know, about a week ago. And so, the most important thing is we gotta figure out um, where our steel lies on the, on the building. So this is not, this building is not a multiple of three, so I know that my ribs aren't gonna line up perfectly on the corners. So, I don't get a, I didn't get a steel layout with this. Um, this is a custom build. This is a, this is a corner trim. So the first thing you want to figure out is where the ribs are gonna lie so this doesn't land on a rib. So I put this up here, how it would fit. I'll mark it here on this corner and here on this corner. I know I'm gonna start my steel on that end, um, and I do that based on where you're uh, predominantly gonna be looking at the steel. This is kind of the front of the building, so I want the overlaps to be away so you can't ever see them. You typically can't see them anyway, um, but this helps uh, visually not being able to see the overlaps. This is 56 foot wide, so a multiple of three is 54. Um, so my rib is going to end like right at the edge of this and that's too close for comfort for me. So I'm just gonna take an inch and a half off my first piece so that I know for sure that my rib is gonna land out here. So I went ahead and um, I just blocked on a two by four onto the other end to bump my tape measure out an inch and a half because I know I'm gonna take an inch and a half off that first piece. And then I pulled nine inch marks all the way across. Now I'll go through, mark those, rip an inch and a half. So I have about three quarters of an inch play here. So that's a rib. That's a rib. So I'll do that on all four sides. Um, if you have a side that doesn't have any windows, it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, you still don't want your ribs to really line up on the corner of doors and uh, garage doors, but that's not nearly as important as windows. And I found that if your window goes below your wainscoting, um, it's not the end of the world if it happens because you can trim it out in a way that it'll shed the water. But if your window is all the way above the wainscot trim, and it lines up on that rib, you have to make a special piece of trim. I mean, no matter what, you can make it work, but it's ideal if they don't line up on those. So this wall is gonna have a ton of windows. And so I wanna be very um, sure that I get this marked out correct for when I place my window. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this all out, and then we'll start figuring out where we're gonna put windows. You can see I started here, I just blocked on a um, two by four because I want to be roughly an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half that way. So that just bumps my tape measure out. So when I pull in a real easy way <clears throat> to do this, instead of trying to figure out what a multiple of nine is, you just have to tell yourself nine, six, three, and then you're going to have an even number. So I'll start and I'll be nine, six, three, three feet. Three is obviously multiple three. Nine, six, three, six feet. Nine, six, three, nine feet, so on and so forth. Um, that's, that's what works um, good for me mentally. Everybody's a little bit different, thinks a little bit different, but that makes it nice and clean for me. I just, in my head, I'm like nine, six, three, then I should have a number 
it is a multiple of three. So um, that brings me to my next thing. If you're designing a home, if you want to make it nice and simple, uh, choose a length and a width that's a multiple of three, and then you know all your steel can just line up right at the corners. You're going to end up with a rib on each corner, and then you can just place your uh, windows accordingly. But it's not that big a deal if you don't. Um, so we're going to do this to all four sides. Um, now that I figured it out on this side, the other side doesn't have any windows. It has a door, um, a walk door, a garage door, but I'm still going to go ahead and mark it out um, in that first little bit. And I want to write on there that I want to bump the steel um, an inch and a half because I still need it to work with my corner trim. Um, so that's the first thing you have to worry about is, is my corner trim going to land on a rib? And then you're, the question is, is, well, Paul, what if I run all my steel and I figured it out wrong and my corner trim lands on Well, you either, one, are going to have some really crappy looking trim, two, you have to take your steel off and move it, or three, what I would do is have somebody custom make you a trim, um, which, you know, the big box stores aren't going to do that, but you could go to, like, a metal supplier like I use, and they will custom make you a trim that will fit. I mean, that's not ideal, but you can make it work. And nobody's really going to notice in the long run either. I've had to do that before, by the way. So when you look at this, this is the start of my rib. The ribs are an inch and a half. So I know my X is on this side, so I know my, this is the start of my rib. And my end of my rib is going to end an inch and a half. So you could go through, mark an inch and a half over. Um, so I want the edges of my windows to lay somewhere in between each of these. So you just have to kind of lay those out accordingly. So now I'm going to tell the guys which window box goes where. So it's hard to see on here, but I'll have to use this to get the rough placement of all these windows across the front. So I'll just figure out which window box goes where and then we'll, we'll do the math here. Big box here, big box here. And then we need three small windows boxes um, just on this wall that's the bottom that's the bottom row anyway and then that great big one over there goes up high up there okay so while you guys move those we'll go mark that other end quick so this is the opposite end wall and I'm gonna start my steel on the same corner so I know that I'm, I've already figured out on the other end where I wanna be. So I'm just gonna, there's gonna be a walk door here so I'm gonna mark this out. So I know this is where my steel would actually start. I'm gonna cut it off um, in an inch and a half but this is where it would start. So now I can just go nine, six, three, three feet, nine, six, three, six feet, nine, six, and then I'm going to skip all this. I know 15 is a multiple three, so in my head I'll just start here, nine, And that's all I really need to mark on this because the rest of the wall doesn't have any windows um, or doors. It's all going to be um, shelving, stuff like that. This garage door actually lines up pretty good. We're going to have a rib right here, um, which isn't a big deal because there's a couple different kinds of trims you can get. Um, what I like to do on these is use like an L... 10 trim here and then put a J trim with silicone behind it and then it really doesn't matter where your rib lies they also make a trim a garage door trim that comes out goes over a rib and then down too so you got multiple options here um, there was uh, some changes after these plans were made so you just kind of have to work through that um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just see where the rest of my garage doors lay and then we'll get all of these uh, when start putting these window boxes in.
Before I set the windows on the backside, I took uh, time to discuss the placement with Ryan um, because there was changes made to the plan. I just want to make sure that they were happy with where the window locations were going to be. The windows I have marked, I kind of centered one in the space. I would say just however that kind of lays out so that it looks pretty symmetrical on this side. Yeah. Alright. So we'll just we'll probably put it like right here somewhere, just give or take based on the, the lines. Alright, cool. Yeah. We have the 18 window boxes installed, and now um, we have to go back, cut out the girts, and then put in blocking between the girts where we cut them out so that we have a place to install all of our trims and our metal. So this home and shop is going to have five Thermatrue doors, which we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, guys, we're going to frame this door and I'm going to show you how I go about doing it. So I make sure I have my nine inch rib marks along here and then this is one edge of my rough opening and this is the other edge so I'm clear of ribs now I'm going to take my level and strike a plumb line on both sides That's really annoying. I need to take that deeper off that thing. But anyway, now that I got those marked, I need to mark out my grade board because the finished floor is below the top of that. So in this case, I always set the bottom of my grade board um, usually uh, seven inches below the finished floor. In this case, there's a this is a six inch slab. The uh, customer wanted a thicker slab, um, so. The, um, from the bottom, I'm going to mark up eight inches, and that's going to be where the finished floor is. Um, I'll strike line, notch that out, and then we go ahead and put our jams in. So even though these grade boards are all marked out, um, I always use a level to mark my line just in case when the guys put it up they didn't get it perfect with the line um, so i'll just mark this out and then now i will take my circular saw and notch this portion out Now that we got this cut out, if I'm doing this by myself, if you got a, somebody helping you hold the jams, what I'll do is I'll take a little block, because the bottom of my jam is going to sit flush right here. So I'll just take a little block. Screw it in there. Take another one to the other side. Screw it in over here. Now I know I can just set my board right here 
and I have something to hold it. So the top jam gets screwed down through into the side jams and then it'll get screwed in through the face of this skirt and then toenailed into the columns. All right, now that that's done, all we have to do is cut these out and block it in, and then this doorway is finished. All right guys, appreciate you watching. Um, as always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Check us out on at our website. We have design services. Uh, we have a plan audit. We have all kinds of things available to you um, if you're looking to build your own house. Um, but next up, we're gonna go ahead and put the house wrap on. I, I'm gonna show you a couple tricks that we uh, use to put that up. And then we will install the five Thermatrue doors. All the windows are on back order. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on framing up this porch, which is really gonna turn this uh, into more of a house. So as always, we appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next video.